Hey everybody, Kurt Davis here with Real Estate Wealth Coaching. And as you know, and everybody knows, the real estate market is on fire. It is absolutely hot, making it harder to find deals. So in this video, I'm going to teach you a tool, a proven strategy that can increase your success of locking in property from inspection to closing from one to five to three and five. This tool is also going to teach you how to do a proper inspection on the home. So not only are we going to increase your conversion rate of closings, but we're going to teach you how to do a proper renovation estimate. Stay tuned. I'm going to give this to you for free. Hey everybody, thanks for sticking around. So what you're gonna learn today, what I'm going to teach you is a new formula, a new strategy, maybe something you've never heard of or something that you are not doing that I guarantee will give you an edge over everybody else uh, for people who are trying to wholesale, fix and flip, buy and hold. It's, it's really what I'm gonna teach happens when you're meeting with the seller uh, face to face at the actual property. Now, before I get into that, make sure you smash that like, subscribe button. Uh, you know, make sure to stick with us, follow us on our channel. We're putting out tons of great content here at Real Estate Wealth Coaching, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you stay till the end of this video, you will learn how to have a higher success rate on locking up property. And I'd love it if you'd leave a comment at the end and let me know what you thought. So, with that being said, I'm gonna get right into it here. No BS today. So, in the world of wholesale real estate, and it's not just wholesaling, but this, this is gonna maybe appeal more to wholesalers uh, than maybe say fix and flippers or buy and holders, but it works for everybody because myself, I fix and flip homes and I do buy and hold. Uh, I'm not primarily a wholesaler, but I use this same strategy. The strategy I'm gonna teach you today is something that I actually do myself, and it actually works at a higher rate than if I were not doing this strategy. So you have to understand that for people who are trying to reach sellers off-market, pr primarily off-market sellers, uh, people are doing a lot of different strategies. They are doing direct mail, uh, cold calling with virtual assistants, text messaging, uh, ringless voice messaging, I mean the, the you know, even bandit signs and, and magnets on cars and everything like that. So everybody is trying to ultimately reach the same property seller. They're just going about it at several different rates. So what happens when somebody finally gives you a call? You know, you get that call and somebody's actually interested in talking with you. One of the things I do is, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, so I have a little bit of experience when somebody calls and they have a house for sale. A lot of times I'm able to look the property up online and uh, I, I'll, I'll right offhand have an idea. I, I'll know what the home will roughly sell for. I got a good idea of what it's going to rent out for if that's the strategy, if I'm gonna rent it out and maybe sell it to an out-of-state investor. Uh, but ultimately, I'm trying to find out over the phone an idea of what they wanna sell the property. You know, at the end of the day, how much do they want for the property? Um, a lot of people will get into the habit of trying to, trying to negotiate and lock up a deal over the phone without ever meeting the seller, without ever actually going to the property. Um, I feel like a lot of people will miss a lot of opportunities if that's the strategy and the, and the way that they approach trying to buy property. So what we have kind of come up with and what I've learned and, and kind of put together with a few other investor friends of mine is a way to come across more professional, more credible when you meet in person with the seller. Uh, when I talk with sellers over the phone, in order for me to actually go down to the property, I want them to put out a number as to where they ideally want to be when they're selling the property. Uh, because ultimately that's going to determine if I'm willing to go look at the property or not. I'm not going to necessarily try to negotiate a deal over the phone. I just want to get an idea of where they're at. If they're wanting above retail by a lot, 
we're probably wasting each other's time, but I will schedule appointments and go check out property, even if they are right at or just a little under what may be considered retail. Um, I'm trying to find out how motivated they seem on the phone, but ultimately what I'm trying to do is I wanna get in the door. And one of the reasons why I'm trying to get in the door is uh, a, things change, they're, they're, they're seeing you. It's not just a voice over the phone anymore, you're face to face. Uh, they're evaluating you. How do you look? How credible do you look? Uh, are you are you there to waste their time, or are you there to actually do business? So, we have a. Ultimately, what I'm going to kind of cover today is I've got a, a form that I bring with me. That I'm going to show you here. Now, this is the form. Front, back, and last page. So there's really three sections to it. Now. If you want this form, if you actually want this form, I'm gonna provide a link in the description below that you can download this form yourself. And you'll be able to download it in Word doc form so you can customize it, you can put your own header on it, uh, you, you can make it personable for you or your business. So, description down below, free download. Now with that being said, one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna obviously print, I'm gonna print this copy off. And when I show up at the property, you know, you do the meet and greet and you're talking with the seller. Uh, but ultimately what I'm doing is, is I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk around the property as I would any other time. Uh, but this time, rather than making just mental notes on what I think it's gonna cost for renovations or writing it down on a, a notebook paper, I'm gonna actually write the renovations down on my list here as you can see so being a full-time real estate investor like myself when we renovate homes for example when I put a new roof on a property I'm able to put a new roof on a home far cheaper than if I called the professional roofing company excuse me out of the phone book I'm gonna save a lot of money uh, that's just the nature of our business so a lot of times I'm going to be able to renovate a home much cheaper than an average homeowner would if they were just trying to call and get renovations done on, theirs, on their property. But when I'm quoting these repairs, the repairs that I'm writing down on that list, I'm writing them down in an estimate of what I think it would cost if they were hiring these uh, professionals out of the phone book or online. So I'm not putting down my pricing on what I'm gonna get, I'm putting down an estimate of what I think it would chart what's gonna cost them which will be more. So if that kind of makes sense, you're putting renovations at a cost that they would have to pay. The other thing you gotta think about too is that when you're talking with these sellers on, on the phone and you're asking them what kind of condition the home is in, when they say the home's in good condition, good condition it means nothing. Because to them, what may be good is a whole lot different. They're not thinking that you're going to have to sell the home retail. They're just thinking that their house is in overall good condition. So a lot of the things I cover here are, we go over the roof, the exterior, siding, fencing, sidewalk, landscaping, yard cleanup, things like that on the outside. Uh, then we have other things that we account for that we're looking at. Interior paint, flooring, kitchens, hallway bathroom, master bathroom, HVAC, electrical plumbing, hot water tank, miscellaneous. Those are kind of the main target things I'm looking at when I'm walking through this property. I'm making notes on this particular sheet and ultimately at the end of the day, I'm going to add these up to come up with what's considered the estimated retail remodeling cost. So this whole one side of that page is for a renovation estimate, okay? Once you have that completed, we have the front part of the sheet. Now, as you can see here, I have estimated after repair value and I put 150 grand. That is the value of what I feel the market value of the home is. Ultimately, that's kind of the target price that I would try to resell this home for. Uh, you have to keep in mind that, uh, that a high percentage of people these days can go online to places like Zillow, Realtor.com, and they can look up their home real quickly to have an idea of what market value is. So uh, there's 
not a lot of sense in trying to convince somebody that has a home that, that could be worth about 150 that their home is only worth, you know, 120. It's, it's not really going to work uh, in this day. So uh, I'm just upfront with them and I say, this is, this is where I feel I could sell your house is at 150 grand. I put the remodeling cost here of 34,700, which in my mock example here, I went through, list everything out that I'd, I'm gonna do, and I've come up with $34,700. So before I get to my actual offer, this last page here is a summary page. So after repair value, 150,000. So here's how you have to break it down to the homeowner. You show them what repairs need to be done to their home, which was that number of 34,700. Sometimes you have to explain to them how you come up with that number or why you're making that repair. Uh, and be prepared to explain yourself. You also have to let them know that when they sell this home on the retail market and they hire a real estate agent to sell the home for them, they're gonna have to pay a 6% commission. So on 150,000 home, uh, they're going to have to pay nine grand in commission. They also need to understand that there is a high, high probability that that buyer is also going to need 3% closing cost uh, paid for them of the sale price. So that'll be another 4,500 from there. Everybody wants a home warranty. There's about 500 bucks. Total cost that it's going to cost this person is $48,700. So their estimated net proceeds, if they did this on their own, if they spent the 34700 which you have to keep in mind, most of these people, the reason why they're calling you a lot of times is they don't have the funds to do this. Most will not. So you need to let them understand that in order for them to sell this house for the 150 that they're, they're thinking that they're going to, they're going to have to cough up thirty-five grand to fix this home up. But then now they're going to have to back out all these other expenses to hopefully net, at the end of the day, $101,300. So, now as the person who's trying to buy this house, if I'm a wholesaler, I need to make a profit. So the real question is, is what are you going to offer under that $101,300? In my example, if I was a wholesaler, I would offer them $95,000. Um, how did I come up with that number? I just felt that that was a fair number that I'm trying to get. They understand that I have to make a little bit of a profit. Um, even if I were going to keep this home or flip it, I would still offer around $95,000 because I'm trying to give myself a little wiggle room in case I have to come up just a little bit. I've left myself some room. So this summary sheet here essentially shows the breakdown of how the numbers work on this whole deal. Here was the renovation list of everything that you showed them as they walked with you on the property of what it was gonna to cost to fix the home up. <clears throat> now the main page now, again, we've got their name, address, the sales market value, the renovation cost, because that's a big number. And then this is where I put my offer. Under that we have offer valid through. If your offer is good for 30, 60, 90 days, put offer valid through whatever date you feel comfortable on there. <clears throat> and then as a little disclaimer I put on here, which you'll see when you download this document is, this offer is pending a professional contractor inspection of the property at no expense to the seller and the execution and conditions of the purchase and sale agreement. So what you're still doing is, is that you're making it so that if you do strike a deal with this person and they agree to sell you the property, you have the ability then to then bring your actual contractor back to the property to do a more thorough renovation estimate to find out that if you were too high, too low, or right on. Uh, and then of course I'm gonna sign it. Got my company logo and my contact information here at the bottom. You're gonna give this to the homeowner. Now I suggest take a picture of, of this with your cell phone just so that you have record because uh, in the event that they do call you a week or two later, you might have forgotten what your offer was. So make sure you take a picture of that so that you know and remember what you wrote down when you met with the seller. But you're going to leave this with them and this, and this it, it sounds crazy, but leaving this with them is very powerful because 
every other wholesaler person who shows up to meet with the seller, they're not leaving them with anything. Most people show up, like I said, most people will show up. At best, they'll have a notepad and a pen and they're making little notes and they try to negotiate the deal and that's it. It may or may not happen, but leaving this form with them gives them something to look at. You have now left your contact information. They see uh, that you are legitimate. This just brings a whole lot more credibility to you and your brand and what you're trying to accomplish. So um, I, I have used this. Since I have started using this form myself, it has drastically increased the amount of properties that we are actually putting contracts on with sellers than I would say before. <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not saying it's a hundred percent by any means, but I would say out of every, every five deals I go to look at, we're probably locking in a solid three. So as opposed to a lot of times you're looking at, you know, you go look at five deals and you maybe at best get one. So, um, if you thought that this form was incredible, if you see any value in this form, make sure you download it. Again, the, the, the link will be in the description below. You can download a copy of this and have it for yourself. Customize it uh, for your liking. Put your logo, put your contact information on there, add to it, take away, whatever you like. But uh, this form works and it has worked for us. So we're rounding out the end of this video. I thank you for staying as long as you have. I know it's been a long time here, but Make sure that you click that like button if you liked the video and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Let me think if, uh, is anybody out there doing something like this? I'd love to hear from anybody who's already doing it. Just let me know what you think. Make sure you click that subscribe button and we will see you guys in the next video.